Our total movie count is somewhere Ding. on the screen. Oh, my headphones fell off. <laughs> my headphones, my <laughs> my headphones. Whoops. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess, and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I have Selena! Hi! Selza 1013, <laughs> for those who don't know, and today we're going to talk about the Brave Little Toaster. I'm trying a new guest format, so I'll be giving you all of my, like, crazy information, probably by myself, unless Selena wants to try some of them. And then at the end, Selena and I will come together and talk about the Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> the Brave Little Toaster is a 1987 animated television slash straight to home video release. It's very complicated. I will talk about it later. It is directed by Jerry Reese, who is best known for Tron, Back to Neverland, Space Jam, and this. Directing animators include Randy Cartwright, Rebecca Reese, and a little unclear because everywhere online said John Lasseter was a directing animator, but in the film, the three directing animators are Randy Cartwright, Rebecca Reese, and Joe Ranft, who also wrote the film. John Lasseter is not given a directing animator credit in the actual film, so I think we're gonna go with Joe Ranft. <laughs> Randy Cartwright is best known for Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Fox and the Hound, and Shrek. Rebecca Reese is best known for Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Alvin and the Chipmunks, and this. Joe Ranft is best known for Toy Story 1 and 2, A Bug's Life, and Cars. The film was edited by Donald W. Ernst, and he is best known for Spirited Away, Fantasia 2000, Aladdin, and Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. The music is by David Newman, and he is best known for The Naughty Professor, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Scooby-Doo, and The War of the Roses. The film is written by Jerry Reese and Joe Ranft, both of whom I covered earlier in the video. The film is based on The Brave Little Toaster, a bedtime story for small appliances by Thomas M. Dish. The novella was released in 1980 and the novel released in 1986. Shall we compare? The story begins by describing five minor home appliances and giving them each a personality. The appliances have grown accustomed to seasonal use and only seeing their master every Labor Day. After two years, five months, and 13 days without seeing the master, the toaster suggests that they need someone to care for. He tells the story about an abandoned dog who found his master from miles away. They plan to do the same and must find a power source for Hoover. However, electricity is dangerous. They rig an office chair with a car battery and Hoover then pulls the appliances on the office chair through the forest. They rest in a meadow on the first afternoon where a daisy falls for its reflection in the toaster's chrome side. At night, the blanket makes himself a tent to protect the others. The next night, they meet a pair of married squirrels who ask what gender they are. They aren't. The squirrels make some inappropriate jokes that no one finds funny. I am so obsessed that the appliances don't have genders in the book. Wow. I love that representation. We are here. During the night, a storming blanket is thrown up into a tree where it is stuck until the next morning when the squirrels help get him down. As a thank you, Toaster roasts some nuts for the squirrels and Blanky keeps them warm. As they continue their travel, they approach a river where Hoover has a panic attack and Toaster helps calm him down by doing sweeping vacuum motions. He has an anxiety attack. Toaster helps him calm down by the equivalent of breathing. I'm obsessed. They make a plan to follow the river until they find a bridge to cross it. However, on the way, the chair gets stuck and turns over and loses a caster. They begin searching for the caster and find a boat. Hoover exclaims they are now going to use the boat to cross the river. Toaster stands up to his friends saying that would make them no better than pirates and they all climb into the boat. As he continues to argue with them, the owner approaches and takes all of the appliances with him. The man takes all of these appliances to his workshop at the city dump and deems every appliance junk except the radio. The appliances pose as a ghost to scare the man and it works and then they escape in a buggy to their master's house which is only a mile from the city dump. At the apartment the appliances reunite with their friends who explain that the master now has a mistress who doesn't like the cottage because of her hay fever. They also explain that the master intends to sell the cottage and all the appliances inside. All five appliances are advertised on the radio and said they must be kept together for sentimental reasons. A woman comes and trades five kittens for the five appliances and the mistress says she will keep the five kittens and take more antihistamines, and the five appliances get to live out their days happy and fulfilled with their new master. The end. It's a bit different than the movie, I'd say. I think the movie's a lot darker, which we will get to. <laughs> but this book, I think, does a really good job of showing how to cope with anxiety and the appliance being genderless. Hello, I'm obsessed with that. And in this book, I feel like the toaster is brave because they stand up to their friends and they suggest finding their master in the first place. The toaster didn't have to do 
any spectacular act of stereotypical bravery in order to get the title of the Brave Little Toaster. They just stood up to their friends and comforted their friends and suggested finding their master, and that's what made that toaster brave. The film stars Deanna Oliver, John Lovitz, Timothy Stack, Timothy E. Day, Thurl Ravenscroft, Phil Hartman, and Wayton Katz. Deanna Oliver plays Toaster and is best known for Animaniacs, Casper, Hot to Trot, and this. John Lovitz plays Radio and is best known for A League of Their Own, Loaded Weapon 1, Hotel Transylvania, and Saturday Night Live. Timothy Stack plays Lampy and is best known for Back to School, Son of the Beach, My Name is Earl, and this. Timothy E. Day plays Blanky and he's best known for TJ Hooker, Rags to Riches, and this. Thurl Ravenscroft plays Kirby and he's best known for The Aristocats, 101 Dalmatians, Home Alone, and this. Phil Hartman plays Air Conditioner and is best known for News Radio. Radio, Jingle All the Way, Small Soldiers, and So I Married an Axe Murderer. Wayne Katz plays the master and he's best known for Pinky and the Brain, Tiny Toon Adventures, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, and this. Disney purchased the film rights to this movie in 1982, and John Lasseter and Glenn Keane had just finished a 2D slash 3D, like both combined kind of animation test for where the wild things are, and they decided they wanted to use that format for a feature film. So John Lasseter and Thomas Wilhite wanted to work on The Brave Little Toaster. John Lasseter pitched the film idea to Ed Hansen and Ron Miller at Disney. They rejected the idea because of how expensive it was to have 2D characters on a 3D background. This led to Thomas Wilhite and William Carroll Carol? Founders of Hyperion Pictures, they were actually previous Disney employees, they founded Hyperion Pictures. They decided they wanted to work on the Brave Little Toaster and John Lasseter could come work on it obviously and they requested from Ron Miller the film, the ability to make the Brave Little Toaster. They said okay but Disney cut the budget from $18 million to $5.94 million, and then it would be considered an independent film under Disney instead of a Disney movie. So Disney was handling part of the distribution and the financial backing of the film, but wasn't actually having any actual hand in the film. So Hyperion Pictures and TDK Corp and Fox Video and CBS and a bunch of other companies all had a hand in the Brave Little Toaster and it was considered an independent film at the time. When casting, Jerry Reese really wanted people to take the film seriously and not be too cartoony, so he ended up going to Groundlings, which is pretty much the equivalent of like Second City or just below SNL in LA, and he used a bunch of those people who later went on to be like on Saturday Night Live and very famous actors. So that was really exciting. Recording took place in a small Hollywood building and Jerry Reese was so worried about the naturalness and authenticity of the lines that he made the actors do as written once at least and then let them play with it and make it more natural to them and how they felt the character would do it. John Lovitz had to record all of his audio in one night because of a Saturday Night Live opportunity. I cannot believe that that's insane. Timothy Day was considered one take Timothy because he could deliver the emotion and everything that was perfect in one take for his one line. Everyone loved that about him. Animation took a year and a half. In the first six months, they did it in LA. The second six months, they did it in Taiwan. And the third six months, were back in the United States. The visual symbolism in the movie was really important to Jerry Reese. He wanted to also tell the story visually. So when Toaster meets the daisy that is yellow, and wilts after he takes the reflection of the daisy away. It makes, it visualizes and symbolizes Toaster thinking, oh, if I'm still mean to Blanky, he might wilt. So then he starts being nice to Blanky. That visual symbolism was very important to Jerry Reese. Newman wrote the score for, for at, like he would write it for any movie. He didn't think that it was an animated movie. He tried to just write it like it was a normal movie and that's what Jerry Reese wanted. The four songs in the film that are sung songs were by Van Dyke Parks. This is the first animated film ever exhibited at Sundance and it did pretty well at Sundance. A lot of judges really enjoyed the film. Scours, Scouros, 
Gauras uh, Pictures wanted to pick up the movie to distribute in theaters, but Disney didn't want the competition, so moved up its release date on television. It was released on the Disney Channel in 1988, and Disney also released it on VHS, Laserdisc, and DVD, as we know, because I have the DVD. And it has a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has some negative reviews, but for the most part is pretty critically acclaimed. We own the DVD and there was a bonus feature, but it was stupid. It said the making of the Brave Little Toaster films and then does not talk about how the first one was made. It only talks about how the second two were made. I don't know if I've told this story on camera yet, but we have a joke in my family. Well, at least my brother and I have a joke where when we were younger, my brother loved a lot of movies that I stayed away from because I deemed them emotionally scarring. I thought my brother loved emotionally scarring movies. Things on that list include The Land Before Time, All Dogs Go to Heaven, Pebble and the Penguin, The Secret of Nim, Don Bluth movies, basically. <laughs> Um, but The Brave Little Toaster was on that list. I did see The Brave Little Toaster. I have memories of The Brave Little Toaster, but watching the film, I didn't remember nearly anything. I just remembered the characters and like Blanky being really cute and like, but otherwise I didn't remember the plot. I didn't remember what happened. I definitely didn't remember that there was singing in the film. I did not remember the music, but as I sat down to watch it, I was like, my brother really liked this, which means it has to be emotionally scarring in some way. And I'm not wrong. I think this movie can be taken a lot of ways. I'm going to show those ways through a lot of different opinions, actually. I think the movie is dark, both visually and conceptually. It's very, there aren't that many bright moments. When they're in the flowers, it's kind of bright. And when, I guess when it's light out, it's a little bright, but for the most part, the film is very dark visually, physically, visually dark, but then concept wise, it's also very dark. My brother claims it's a story about hope in all of these dark situations they get out of it. Well, another friend of mine who has very strong opinions about this movie thinks it is the darkest movie ever and should have never been marketed toward kids and is not made for kids, etc. So I think this film is very polarizing in the way that you take it. I'm going to read messages my friend from high school sent me about this film. I'm also going to put them up here. He believes this film, he loves it, but he believes it is very very dark. The movie begins with the toaster and gang blowing the AC unit into suicide by telling him his life has no purpose. The entire forest scene is traumatic as heck between the mice eating Blanky alive and the flower dying from not seeing its reflection. The toaster now has to live with himself for both killing the flower and the AC, which they do not care about whatsoever. I'm pretty sure Kirby calls the AC a jerk immediately after he commits suicide. Then there's the Pennywise lookalike coming to jab a fork into the toaster during its fever dream, which is another level of unholy fear. And the lamp tried to sacrifice himself through electrocution to power up his friends, and Kirby has a seizure and chokes on his cord. It's honestly just a ludicrously dark movie that shakes children to their core. And not to mention Blanky's line, which still haunts me to my core, the toaster pleads with the equivalent of a six-year-old child to save himself and blankly just stares him dead in the eyes and says in the most calm voice i am not afraid the brave little toaster was marketed to young children and is heavily centered around suicide life being meaningless and the world being an evil place this movie is what happens when you listen to marilyn manson for two weeks on repeat without sleeping and then start sketching household appliances in a drug-fueled sleep-deprived hallucinogenic state as you can see this friend of mine has very strong opinions about the brave little toaster all of which i believe are very valid but also my brother's opinion of it being a hopeful film is also valid. It, I think it all depends on how you look at it. And so that is why I am very happy to announce that I have a guest, Selena. Let's bring her in and talk about The Brave Little Toaster. It's time. It's time for what? To talk about The Brave Little Toaster. Oh yeah. <laughs> Selena has never seen The Brave Little Toaster. Never, never even heard of it. Nope. Nada. I said we were gonna watch that and she goes, what's that? <laughs> and I was like, perfect. <laughs> because I, as I've discussed, have seen it, but don't really remember it. And then the two people's opinions I have 
have seen the movie plenty of times. Mm -hmm. So now I'm very happy <laughs> to have an opinion who's fresh. She watched it literally a couple hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> We ate before we came here. Um, Yum. And now we can talk about it. I have some of Selena's initial reactions written down because they were just too good. <laughs> First and foremost, um, I tried not to tell Selena that this movie is a little bit sad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, you know that. what? I'm going to try not to say anything. But right at the beginning, <laughs> when the blanket thinks the master has come and then it's not real, Selena goes, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> Some other highlights include um, when the AC dies, she said, that's kind of traumatizing. <laughs> uh, I'm so scared for them, oh my god, when they were leaving to go on their adventure. Honestly, I was worried about them. And the entire journey was just, like, intense. And <laughs> I was just so worried for them. I'm like, how are you guys going to go, like, find your master if you don't even know where the heck he is and stuff? I'm like... An icon. And then, <laughs> how is this movie going to get darker while they're <laughs> singing the City of Lights song? <laughs> that one killed yeah. me. I was dying so, oh, I was dying for that one because, oh, man, does it get darker after <laughs> the City of Lights song? She was cracking up the whole time when I was I saying love, these things. So oh I'm just like, God. oh, no, I don't, I'm, I'm so not ready for this, am I? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, what is going on at the fish bird worm scene? Yeah! <laughs> the frogs and the fish <laughs> and the bird, you were just like, what's happening? And I, I feel like, like, that's a move. I feel like that was not necessary. Was that like contributing to them with nature? Or I don't, it animals? is a very unnecessary scene. I think there's quite a lot in this movie that's actually completely unnecessary, to mm. be perfectly honest. That is a major scene. I'm like, <laughs> what's the point? Like, you guys are not even talking to the animals, they're just yeah. like being weird and stuff and yeah. dancing. Yeah, oh my god, the mice. <laughs> Oh, God, no! I, this time, I didn't notice my first time watching it earlier this week, but the second time, I heard Blinky go, they're killing me. And I was like, is that what he said? Yeah. Did he say they're killing I thought they were like, they're taking me with something they're he said. But in this one, I was like, did he just say they're killing me? Oh, my God! It's horrifying. Rats would do that to a blanket, to be yes, honest. Yes, that sounds more sad. rip it and eat it. When you told Kirby to jump after all those oh! fucking smell. <laughs> I was dying. I thought that was so funny. Character development. You don't. You know you need them. Um, They're your friends. Both of us completely freaking out <laughs> when Toaster said, untie yourself, and Blinky said, I'm not scared. Oh, yeah. And both of us were like, what the heck is going on? That, to me, was, like, so dark. The oh, scene with the parts. First oh, of like, all, the beginning of the music. You were like, what the <laughs> heck is going on? And then the shadow of the guy... Like, doing the blender motor. Like, he looked like, you he, looked like he was like, stabbing that it. Is, like, that is so scary. It's like the silhouette shadow. He looked like he was stabbing them. I was yeah, like, what yeah, the yeah. hell? I know yeah. he was, like, taking its parts out, but still, it's like, it's weird when you look at it. It's like, what? What? Now that you've had an hour or two to sit with it, <laughs> what are your opinions of the Brave Little Toaster? <laughs> I, I enjoyed it, really. Yeah. I liked it. I was not expecting anything, and I... I never heard of it, so, yeah. like, and then when I was watching, like, through it, I'm like, what the heck, Disney? Like, this is weird. <laughs> like, this is, like, but now that you told me it's not really Disney, it makes sense now. So now I want to tell you the very differing opinions of my other friends. Oh, yes. And get your take. Let's so my it. brother mm. is the one. My brother loves this movie. He thinks, yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff that happens in the movie, but overall sure. he thinks it's a story of hope. Because oh. it has a good ending. So, like, no matter what you go through, there's always hope. That's how he takes it. Mm hmm I agree. Yeah? I agree. I totally see that perspective. My friend... Um, <laughs> the toaster, especially. Who, who has these strong opinions Ooh, let's about the film starts with... The movie begins with the toaster and blowing the AC unit into suicide by telling him his life has no purpose. The entire force scene is tremendous effect, between the mice being blanky lives and the power dying from not seeing it Oh yeah, The toaster and the has to live with himself with a and the AC, which they do not care about whatsoever. I'm pretty sure Kirby calls the AC jerk immediately after he commits suicide. That was a pretty look-alike the freaking clown. Oh yeah! The clown is horrifying. Oh jeez. Coming to death into the toaster trying to see a dream, which is another level of unbelief here. And the left tries to sacrifice himself through the power of his friends, and Kirby's seizure jumps on his cord. It's not such a blanky line, which still haunts me like horror. The toaster pleads with the equivalent of a six-year-old child to save himself and blanky to stare from dead eyes and says, in the most calm voice, I'm not scared. Oh god. The great little toaster was marked at the young children and is headless under <laughs> I totally forgot about the AC, but I didn't see that as suicide. I thought yeah. that he was just being like that because he was angry. I also didn't see that as suicide. Mm. When he said that, I was like, oh, interesting. This is what I meant. Like, I think this movie 
is all about perspective. It's mm -hmm. about how you take it. So I didn't see the AC unit as suicide. I just thought he got so worked up he blew a fuse. Mm -hmm. And then later, like when he gets fixed, he like learns his lesson not to be so like jaded. Oh yeah, and, and he everything. cried too. And like <laughs> they, he did cry. It was sad. Yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> but also, I also think that they didn't want the AC unit to pass away because they were like also being mean back to him. But the second mm. he started freaking out, Toaster was like, we didn't mean it. Calm, like, oh my gosh, calm yeah. down. Like, he's trying to calm him. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really about perspective. The mice eating Blanky alive is a yeah. thing that happens. That is, that is, you can't debate that. I will say there are some the dark lamp. stuff in yeah. the movie involving the, death. The lamp trying to like get electricity for oh, his yeah. friends. That was, she, you were like, oh I my thought God. he was I gone. thought he was dead too. I was like, I don't remember Lampy dying, but like, here we are. I'm pretty sure he's dead. And then he's uh, fine, and you're like, I was like, oh my God. They survive so much that electric things shouldn't survive. <laughs> I think the film can be very polarizing in this way. Because that movie for kids, I will yeah, say. That, there has been some traumatizing things in the yeah. movie, so I wouldn't recommend yeah. the kids at all. I think. The AC unit dying is traumatizing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like suicide, whatever you might take it And they it still as. show it in like- He's in the background, in the background constantly background. just dead and you're like, wow, that's dark. Like in shadows, I'm like, that's weird. The yeah. Dark, literally the cars are singing like, you're, you're worthless. worthless. Like, oh my God. So I also agree. I think my biggest takeaway from this is it's not for small children. Mm -mm. Um, not at all. Nope. I think my high school friend is correct in that it's not for children, but I also think my brother's correct in saying it is a story about hope because mm -hmm. after all of that, it is a happy ending. So mm -hmm. everything they went through, a lot of almost was crushing, worth. almost drowning, almost getting eaten alive, almost everything, they still got where they were going. It was and worth they had it. Hope. Yeah, it exactly. Was worth it. As someone who just watched it for the first time, do you have like a favorite part? Uh, what? Well, I'm still like kind of traumatized. <laughs> okay, okay. In a, in a, I mean, in a good way. Like, I guess like I probably would have been more terrified if I watched it as a kid, just because like I don't understand. Percent. <laughs> I'm thinking so hard of what part I liked. It's okay if you don't have a favorite part. You just uh, watched it, so like. Can I say my my uh, favorite sad part? Yeah. <laughs> I can't find a happy like favorite part in this but like the part where um blanky wanted to cuddle and no one wanted to i'm it's like what so the heck sad. i felt so bad for blanky but I was then like, later toaster, toaster like, yeah cuddles him, and lampy's like what's going on i kind of shipped them for a bit oh my god because like, i thought there was going to be romance when they mentioned that part mm. like lampy was like so, so what's with you and blanky huh i'm like what does that mean is there going to be romance in this movie <laughs> No, no. Yeah. I think because Wanky's so little, like they're mm. all like he's a baby. <laughs> Scariest part. Uh, oh crap! There's a lot. <laughs> that's that's true. And the mood. Uh, hmm. The part of the, uh, I guess when Lampy was about to die. Oh really? I thought he was gonna die. I was very like. Oh go okay okay okay. Because I thought like they were gonna show everyone like uh -huh. going little by little and like dying for good. Yeah. And then like yeah. the last one standing will be like maybe the toaster, the toaster or Blinky. Yeah yeah yeah. I'm torn between scariest parts. I think mm. either the part in the parts section, this parts song where they're like, mm. you know, stabbing or re removing blenders, yeah, that was motors good. and crap. <laughs> or my other most scary part is when Master is about to get crushed. Oh by yeah! By the thing. Oh, That's God. really that scary. That was frustrating. I was like, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, when Toaster got crushed in the. Oh, I oh forgot my God, about and that. The gears, yeah. To me, that was graphic. Even though I know yeah. he's a Toaster, but that was graphic. It was graphic. He was like dying. <laughs> yeah. And, but like. like you saw cars get that whole song is like you're just watching car after car die. Get, yeah. Like just be <laughs> murdered. The, uh huh. So my, my whole thing is like the film is scarring, but there is a lot of death and death themes because like the blender and yeah. the AC unit and the flower and the cars all at the end. Like there's a lot of death in the film. Jesus. In the parts sequence, the refrigerator is alive, but at their house, the refrigerator oh, was yeah. something they were going to use to travel. So Unless like, how come the refrigerator isn't alive? Unless it died, I don't know. Well, then they're using oh, the wasn't... corpse of their friend to move around? <laughs> oh yeah, because it wasn't plugged, no. It didn't matter if they're plugged in. Yeah. They all had lives anyway. 
What about Kirby though? Kirby just couldn't like pull them um, being plugged, unplugged. He was still alive unplugged. Oh, okay. I'm still confused. <laughs> this movie's hella dark. <laughs> it's, it's so dark. It's really dark, but somehow uh, you come away enjoying it. Mm -hmm, yeah. I don't know how. I don't know how yeah. that much dark stuff can happen. Probably because of the happy ending. Yeah. Probably. If it wasn't a happy ending, I think both of us would have left that movie being like, no. Yeah. I'm never watching that <laughs> Everybody again. Everybody dies. No one makes I'm it to the master. I'm never watching that. Yeah, oh my god. Do you have <laughs> anything else to say about the film? Uh, I kind of recommend it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. T. I rec I, yeah, I recommend this movie for adults, not not for kids though. Yeah, don't let your kids. Don't watch it, watch it with your little brother, or sister, or cousin. What do you think? What do you think is an age that's appropriate? Maybe like around the teens. I yeah, when I was thinking like about high it, school, like I thought yeah. like thirteen and up. Like yeah. it should kind of be a PG thirteen movie. Yeah, maybe. 11, 12, like that's totally fine. I think they're old enough at that point to know like everything's fine. Okay. What would you rate it, do you think? I would rate it a six. <gasps> Me too. Yay! Six appliances out of 10. Mm -hmm. Yes, appliances. Yes. Um, appliances. Our total movie count is somewhere on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, parent death toll and cry count are still the same. I didn't cry and there were no mm -hmm. parent deaths. There was a lot of death, but none of them were parents. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so true. Please, 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 please follow Selena. She subscribed to her YouTube channel. If you love Kingdom Hearts, yeah. head over there, my dudes. She is my Kingdom Hearts connoisseur. <laughs> Any question I have, so you should see me text her when I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm like, who is this? I try. <laughs> She's like, okay, this, 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 and this. Watch this. And I'm like, wow, mm. thanks, friend. Yeah. Um, also follow her on Instagram and all the shebang. Mm -hmm. She's really good at cosplaying. Thank you. She's a really talented artist. Cells of 1013 on everything. Yeah. It'll be linked in the description, I promise. <laughs> Please click them and subscribe and follow and all that fun stuff. Uh, if you want to follow me to find out what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. And you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank yeah. you oh, for being no here. Problem. Thank you for having video. me again. You have to come again. Mm -hmm, for sure. For sure. You should come during celebration time. Oh, when's that? In August, so I'll probably be filming in July. Oh, cool. Yay. Yay. I'm up for it. Yay. Yeah. Um... Thank you for being here. Did mm -hmm. that. And oh, Whoa. until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm not sure if you are, so you do. And don't be the AC about it. He was kind of a jerk, but he's being <laughs> bullied. That's true, yeah. Definitely the repair guy. Oh, yeah, don't. Oh, my God. Don't be the Or the magnet. Guy. Oh, God, yeah. Don't be the repair guy or the magnet. Now I see why they call him the brave little toaster because he took it. He took it for the master. <laughs> Do something! Don't just stand there. He jumps. Stand there, staring. Is that at your suicide man. as well? Yeah. Oh, sick. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's okay. I'll believe it. Believe. Okay. Right there we go. G. G. Of course. G. My butt. Because there's no like sexual. That's well, true. Well, what are you gonna do, Kirby? Suck me to death. <laughs> I like, I'm taken aback by that line every time. <laughs> it always has a Don Bluth feel to it. Don mm. Bluth did Land Before Time, Secret of Nim, American Tale. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Thank you. What no a good problem. combo. Yeah. Yay. Bye. That was fun. Raggedy cut. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that sounded like. <laughs> 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 <laughs>